Welcome back. Uh, today is the second day of this week. So, yesterday we looked at uh, the pulsing techniques, uh, particularly we started with the cavity dumping. So, what we said that in cavity dumping, what you do? You uh, store the energy within the cavity and in a short period of time, you dump it outside. You get a pulse laser output. So, uh, we showed that uh, in practice we use an acoustic modulator. So, we modulate it okay, and as a function of this modulation, we get pulsed output. So, how would the you know uh, pulses, uh, pulse patterns will look like okay, the temporal profile. So, the temporal profile uh, uh, for cavity dump output. So, uh, cavity dump output will generally have a sinusoidal temporal output. Pattern. Okay. So, essentially if you look at the intensity as a function of time, it will look like So, they are of same intensity and it is like a sinusoidal profile. Okay. Now, a uh, few things uh, which I should mention uh, regarding the cavity dumping process is uh, first place, uh, there is uh, you know all the time in a cavity dumping process, the resonator losses are kept at minimum. So, the resonator losses are always kept at minimum. Okay. We, we have already seen like if you have more gain over loss, then only you will have a output. And in this case, uh, so, so what you have to do? We have to increase the gain and minimize the loss. And in the cavity dumping process, the losses are minimum because we are taking care of the two mirrors or all the mirrors that we are using, <coughs> they are you know having 100 percent reflectivity. So, no light is being escaped from the cavity. The less probability of escaping uh, from the cavity for the light essentially stimulated photons, less is the loss. And less is the loss means high is the output power. So, so this is one important aspect. Okay. And uh, another uh, important uh, uh, characteristic or for that better I can say uh, an advantage of this uh, cavity dumping process is you have seen that uh, you know you can switch all the stored photon in the cavity can be dumped by just one round trip time. Why? Because in the last uh, class we have shown, right? So, if we can just uh, go back and have a look at this. So, the moment this process happens, that is this is this guy is coming in this direction, all the lights from here is just coming in one direction and then it goes out. So, this is an unidirectional process. So, all time that we is re, uh, that we require is that one round trip time maximum. By then, all the stored photons will be out of the cavity. Now, what is one round trip time? So, 
a cavity size, uh, you know, uh, with given a normal cavity size, we can have like uh, um, say one meter is the round trip distance, suppose. Okay. So, in one meter, how much how much time it takes for light to travel one meter? We can easily figure it out, right? So, essentially, uh, uh, so here uh, let us do it. So, one meter divided by c, so which is essentially 10 power minus 9 second. So, that is nanosecond, okay. so in the order of few nanosecond. So, within this much time, we can empty the cavity totally. And this is the greatest advantage of cavity damping technique. Now, you may uh, you know wonder like you know why that be so important. It is important because uh, it is not only the you know energy or uh, I mean the amount of energy or uh, the power or the uh, you know pulse duration that is important, but also how many times the pulses are coming in a second that is the repetition rate that is also important. So, for various process various uh, reasons people would like to have uh, high repetition rate laser. So, if you have high repetition rate laser uh, if you need that and if you still you know want to have short pulse high energy then this is the way to go because within a nanosecond this is all the lights stored in the cavity are out. So, uh, if I uh, just uh, uh, you know see what actually determines the pulse width, the answer is is the cavity length, right. So, cavity length determines more or less the pulse duration, right. So, here let me just uh, write down bit explicitly. So, the, ad the advantage of uh, cavity dumping is that it can uh, you know extract all the stored intracavity photon intercavity photon means whatever the photons are there in the cavity uh, within just one round trip time fine and that time is essentially roughly this one correct so 1 meter is suppose a round trip time round tip uh, length and c is the velocity that is meter per second and you get this much amount of time for releasing all the photon. So, in case of high repetition rate lasers also you can get high peak energy and short pulse duration which we will see in case of Q switching may not be that easy. Okay. So, Q switching is another uh, pulsing technique that uh, we will look at next. Okay. So, now let us look at other technique that is the second one that we want to look at Q switching. Now, if we want to uh, talk about this Q switching, first let us talk in physical terms. So, in physical terms, the reasoning behind uh, this particular method of uh, pulsing or achieving pulsed operation uh, can be shown here. Okay. So, let us see what it is. So, if you have a shutter, okay. so uh, suppose we have a shutter, so 
So, this is the physical concept. behind this Q switching. Okay. So, we have a shutter such that we can increase the loss in the cavity. increase the loss per round trip. Okay. So, that you know why do I do that? So, I, I reduce the loss that means, I am not you know allowing the round trip to be complete. So, we are not essentially creating or storing energy in the cavity, because we are using some shutter which is blocking the light to go and uh, hit both the mirrors. So, there is no creation of energy within the cavity by increasing the amount of loss. But when this is happening, that is we are increasing the loss by using this shutter, at the same time my pump is on. So, what I am doing essentially, I am creating population inversion. So, I am storing energy within my active medium. Okay. So, this is in contrast to what we have learnt in case of cavity dumping. Okay. So, you make sure that you understand this point very clearly. In cavity dumping, we store the energy within the cavity. We allow the round trip to happen through active medium. Here, in case of Q switching, we, we use a shutter to close the gate so that the light cannot move back and forth between this mirror end mirrors and thereby causing huge loss. While this loss is taking place by round trip, pumps are putting the molecules more and more in the excited state, creating more and more population inversion and high degree of population inversion. All right. so, so, this will allow create population inversion, because I am not allowing the light to uh, the excited molecules to come down. Okay. So, my shutter is you know blocking the light to make the round trip for a certain period time. Okay. Now, how much is this time period? This is the time period by which the amount of spontaneous emission is very negligible. So, thereby I am not really losing my you know uh, population at the excited state. So, with time this population grows and I achieve very high degree of population. And when I feel that enough population inversion has been achieved okay, or enough P i has been achieved, then I will remove my shutter from that place. That is, I open the shutter. Okay. You open the shutter. What will happen? It will now reduce the loss because shutter was initially blocking the beam to propagate in the cavity. Now, I am making the shutter open. So, now the beam can propagate through the cavity. So, that means, I am reducing the loss. So, this process reduces the loss, loss in cavity, rather it is increasing the gain. So, now the moment I open the shutter, the photons are moving back and forth between two end mirrors and what happens by just few you know uh, uh, round trips, the already created population inversion will give rise to 
a very large amount of stimulated photon that will come out as a function of time until the total population inversion is reversed. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> this will create uh, or this will uh, release large number of photons in a short time. Okay. So, <coughs> this is the basic physical concept behind the Q switching operation. Okay. So, let me just tell it briefly again. First, you block the beam within the cavity, so that it cannot move back and forth between these two mirrors, creating loss. In the meantime, the population inversion is being created. So, once enough population inversion is created, you open the gate. So, the light now can move back and forth between these mirrors and population inversion gets reversed by giving a burst of photons. That is what my Q switching is. So, uh, why this name Q switching came? Okay. So, there are two things Q and switching. So, Q the first term it refers to quality. If I be very specific, this is related to the quality factor. So, we have already learnt what quality factor is uh, in uh, one of the previous classes in some other con, you know, uh, con, uh, context. So, what was the uh, quality factor? We uh, saw that quality factor is the emission frequency divided by the spectral width and this can be very high for certain laser and we say this is good However, uh, potential to be used in high resolution spectroscopy. Now, this definition of quality factor came from the expression of quality factor Q, which is given by this energy stored in the cavity divided by energy loss per optical cycle. Okay. So, essentially this from here we get this definition. Okay. So, what does this mean? This means that the Q switching, uh, so this is uh, this uh, is related to the quality, the first term Q and another is switching, so, meaning that we are uh, switching between different qualities. Okay. So, what, what does that actually mean? So, that means following. So, Q switching represents the effect of suddenly reducing the rate of energy loss within the laser cavity. So, uh, first the quality of the laser cavity is reduced okay? and that is what we just said and in the next step we increase the quality.
quality. So, when we talk about reducing the quality, that means we increase the loss. Higher is the loss, lower is the quality, correct? So, they are inversely proportional in some way. So, in Q switching, what we do? We first reduce the quality of the cavity by increasing the loss and in the next step, we reduce the loss by increasing the quality. So, we switch between these two uh, ends of quality. So, low to high quality. So, what we need to do for that to achieve uh, a laser output, pulse laser output using this mechanism. Okay. So, this is you know the principle that we uh, would like to follow because this seems uh, doable. So, while we are reducing the quality of the cavity, the pump should uh, you know build up enough population and pump should actually exceed the spontaneous emission, we just stated few minutes ago. right? So, during this you know uh, creation of population inversion, the spontaneous emission has to be quite minimum. So, my pumping process has to be extremely efficient, I should not allow the you know excited molecules to come down by spontaneous emission. We have to keep bombarding with the pump photons, so that I achieve a high degree of population, high degree of population inversion, maintain it and achieve more. Okay. So, in the next step after you know population inversion is created, I have to switch the qualities right? and this switching time will give me the desired width or duration of the pulse that comes out. So, this duration of the switching has to be short, short enough. Okay. If it is long, then there are so many problems associated to with that. Okay. So, uh, if time permits, then we will discuss about those things. So, now, first let us look at uh, you know what are the methods that one can use to uh, get a Q switch laser. So, uh, the lasers where uh, this Q switching technique is used to get pulse output is called Q switch lasers. Okay. Q switched laser. Okay. So, many Q switch lasers are available. This is one of the uh, you know most popular pulsing techniques that people used and Q switch lasers are probably the most used laser for example, like you know Q switched uh, N D YAG laser uh, or N D Y V O 4 laser or uh, you know even the ruby laser, they are all uh, they all used Q switching. Now, uh, let us look at the you know methods. Okay. So, method for creating uh, Q switched pulsed output. Okay. So, <coughs> How we can do that is as follows. So, first you have an N mirror, you have an active medium. So, this is like you know as usual, now there is no you know a mirror on the other side, I have not drawn that intentionally, because in this system there is no permanent mirror on the other side. So, the in normal cases I have this one, but in the present case I do not have such mirror. Okay. Instead what we have is a mirror which is you know say let me show this one, this is a mirror. So, this is a high reflecting mirror, high reflecting mirror, this is another high reflecting mirror. Okay. So, you must be wondering now that okay, you are using uh, 
sorry, sorry, this one, uh, let me correct this one. So, this one will be, so this is a, uh, an end mirror. Okay. So, uh, this will be, this part will be partially transmitted, right. So, whenever I say end mirror, uh, what we mean is this mirror is partially transmitted. So, partially transmissive. So, now uh, let me complete what I was saying. So, this mirror is placed on a rotating mount. Okay. So, essentially this can rotate. So, I have one mirror here, I have my active medium and on the side instead of having a fixed mirror parallel to this one, I have something which can rotate. Okay. So, it can just rotate in this plane or in this plane, does not matter. So, while this rotation is being executed by this mirror, there will be one time when these two are parallel. Correct. So, if it, if it is rotating in this way, then at some point of time they will be parallel. Okay. So, the way I have shown here, at this moment they are parallel just like any normal laser cavity, except this particular incident all the time I actually have great loss in the cavity, because my this mirror is not parallel. So, this is some pointing at some other direction. right? So, this cannot form a cavity where the light will move back and forth between those two. Only in one particular orientation it will be and that will come at a particular time. So, this rotating mirror essentially is inducing a high degree of loss in the cavity. So, creates high loss in the cavity, except when the mirror or the rotating end mirror is parallel to the high reflecting mirror well understood. So, when this rotating mirror is not parallel to this one, what is happening? The population inversion is being created more and more and more and more. And when this after making a full revolution, the mirror again comes back to the parallel position. That time it completes the cavity and minimizes the loss. And that moment all the excited molecules will come down and then it goes out from the output coupler. You get a pulsed output. This mirror can be rotated quite fast and that will define like you know uh, how many times it will uh, give you this pulse output. So, it can be you know um, having high speed as uh, say like 500 rpm and you get a decent pulsed output. So, this is kind of uh, you know uh, uh, proof of the concept that I can get a pulsed output by switching the quality of a cavity from low to high. First lowering the quality, increasing the loss and then increasing the quality by minimizing the loss and thereby you can create a pulsed output. So, there are other available uh, techniques for uh, creating quick Q switch pulse laser and we will talk about that tomorrow. Thank you very much.